Hello everyone. My name is Mukesh Jaga and I am from Venue Dot Events. Today we have a very special guest with us. Afternoon, Mr. Ajit Bajaj. Good afternoon. Before I start the interview with you, I'd like to give to the audience your brief. You are the owner for Snow Leopard Adventures and also uh, four times winner for National Tourism Award. And also you are a Padam Shri awardee. He is a bronze medalist in kayaking, national games and won a silver medal and two bronze medals in international rafting in Switzerland and in Russia. He has climbed the seven summits including Mount Everest with his daughter Dia way back in 2018. One of the few people who has completed the Explorer's Grand Slam which, is, which entails skiing to the North and the South Pole and climbing of the seven summits. At present he is also the president for Adventure Tour Operators of India in short form which is called ATOAI and also has been given the award of Hall of Fame both by ITO and ATOI. Welcome Mr. Jeet Bajaj again. Thank you so much Mukesh ji. Pleasure to be with you. Would like to know that what really prompted you to come into adventure and how did you start your journey? So, Mukesh ji, I was very lucky. When I was very young, my father introduced me to trekking. Um, he, he took me trekking when I was a six-year-old up in the mountains. And in school, I got into mountaineering and again in college, uh, I continued with mountaineering, got into skiing and that's the time river rafting and kayaking was starting in our country. So, straight which, out of college. Which, which was that year? This was in 1986. Okay. So, when my friends were getting real jobs in the real world, I decided to follow my passion, mm -hmm. which, is, which was adventure and right. make it my profession. And uh, well, I'm very happy to say that my friends do acknowledge that I have the best job in the world. If you're passionate about what you do in life, yeah. you don't work a single day yeah. of your life. Yeah. So, um, well, it's, a, it's been a fantastic journey, uh, straight out of college, I got into adventure sports. So the first thing I did was compete um, in the national games for kayaking. I was the captain of the Delhi water sports uh, team and then represented India in international rafting championships in Switzerland, in Russia, in Turkey, got a silver and two bronze medals along the way and uh, began this quest to explore this beautiful planet of ours, rafted some of the most challenging rivers on the continents, uh, uh, on the planet spanning all six continents. So from the upper Amazon headwaters of the Amazon in South America to the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon, which is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. This is in North America also the Alsek River in Alaska, to a whole lot of rivers in Europe, um, in Australia, um, in Africa, the Zambezi River in Africa, which also has crocodiles and hippos and some very wild rapids below Victoria Falls. And uh, very lucky uh, to have rafted and kayaked uh, a number of rivers in India, including uh, first descents. So we were the first crazy people to venture down some of these wild and beautiful rivers of India. Had the very proud privilege of training the Indian Armed Forces as well. So okay. led uh, 50 courses and expeditions for the Indian Armed Forces, mm -hmm. including our Special Forces. Mm -hmm. I think um, that was a big highlight. While I was their uh, team leader and instructor, I learned a lot from them mm -hmm. and uh, the two learnings are uh, that that have helped me a lot that the more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war right and also when the going gets tough, tough. the tough yeah. get going, going. yeah that's so true. that was a huge honor and uh, began a fantastic quest to to climb the uh, to i beg your pardon to ski to the to the poles the north pole and the south pole uh, these were childhood dreams and I was very lucky to make them come true. 
and um, well this is the time when i had my uh, my two best adventure buddies in my life my daughters dia and megna mm-hmm. and we do a lot of um, adventures together we go kayaking hiking skiing uh, scuba diving together we are all rescue divers um, and well my younger daughter enjoys the outdoors uh, as i mentioned she's a rescue diver enjoys kayaking skiing my elder daughter enjoys the the extreme mm. uh, adventures so both of us uh, when dia was very young we we did some extreme expeditions we did a sea kayaking expedition along the fjords of west greenland we then skied across the greenland ice cap f- along the arctic circle mm-hmm. from the west to the east coast about 600 kilometers when dia was all of 17 kilometers mm-hmm. and uh, after that both of us decided we were both mountaineers that we wanted to climb the seven summits together which is the highest mountain on every continent and um, very happy to tell you that um, on may 16 2018 we were able to climb mount everest from tibet right. from the north face and northeast ridge um, as the first daughter father team from the country and that was a very proud and emotional moment yeah for both of us we wanted to give a strong message to our fellow citizens that uh, firstly uh, the time for our country india has come there is no challenge too big for us indians and all of us whichever field we are in we have to strive for excellence work together as a team and face some of the storms the challenges in the pursuit of our dreams and uh, take our tiranga yeah to the highest summit yeah on the planet and the second message was about our daughters that as parents we have to support our daughters and if we and we have to help them to dream big and again face the storms in the pursuit of their dreams with them and uh, with a never given attitude and uh, given that nurturing and support our girls can attain any heights and they can take our country to the next level yeah. to the next orbit yeah and then also uh, when you are giving it to the younger ones uh, beat your own family or anybody whom you are teaching uh, you are instilling them discipline and you are instilling them so much of confidence in them that they can brave out any situation whichever may yeah. come like especially when you are going through making them pass through the adventure tourism so you become very strong and that's what life is all about you Absolutely. can't make them sleep in an ac and say that nothing uh, life is easy life is never easy yeah. ajit ji can you just name the seven summit for the convenience of our viewers okay sure uh, so uh, there are a couple of different versions i'm giving you the uh, what we did yeah so the easiest one is called kosciuszko in australia it's pretty much a walk up Mm-hmm. and then in africa you have mount kilimanjaro mm-hmm. um in europe uh in russia you have uh, mount elbrus in asia of course uh, on the border between nepal and tibet uh, you have mount everest um in south america you have mount concagua in argentina and in north america in usa in alaska you have mount uh, denali and in antarctica you have uh, mount winson so these are the seven summits that we climbed and uh, as a daughter father team right and uh, i must admit as a father it was a huge privilege to 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 climb with my daughters like i mentioned um, we 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 go out all the time to the outdoors both my daughters and i scuba diving we have a lot of fun together and uh, i think this has been one of the blessings of my life ji ji i totally agree what you are saying it's not only a pride moment for you and your family but even it's a pride moment for us being in the tourism industry that uh, you have taken them and and shown the right way to them 
which is the absolutely a very good thing what you have done and the whole tourism industry is really very proud of you thank you as an entrepreneur there would have been a lot of challenges what are the challenges which you have overcome or any experiences you would like to tell to our viewers i think it's been a fantastic journey like i said i'm passionate about adventure so the journey with snow leopard adventures has been amazing i've enjoyed every step of it there have been many challenges but one of the things that has helped me from the word go um, i've had a fantastic team some of my colleagues who are still with with me who are like family um, like the head of operations asta maharjan mm -hmm. um, he's been around for 30 years mm -hmm. um, so he's like a brother and uh, i think very very fortunate to have had an amazing team um and and that has been our biggest uh, biggest strength uh, once we started we worked very hard honestly and there has been no looking back um and of course i mean we don't work hard for uh, for awards or anything of course that that always feels good but for us in adventure tourism what is best is uh um, to to get good reviews from every guest who goes on an adventure trip with you uh, our endeavor is to make it the safest the best experience of their lives and when they keep coming back to us again and again um this weekend we we had a corporate team who came who've been coming back to us for 34 years right so these are the kind of relationships that we forged so to young entrepreneurs who are getting into into any field i would say uh to my mind two critical aspects or i would say three critical aspects one of course is honesty hard work and dedication yeah second is build a team um and uh, they should be like family with you um and the third uh equally important aspect is your um uh, relationships um at work um i think a bit of money comes and goes that is not important but the trust and relationships you forge over the years that always um uh, makes life and this journey of uh, entrepreneurship more rewarding yeah. and fun along the way as well I'll still come back to the seven summits. Okay. How much time did it take to do all these seven summits and what is the denure totally took from uh, uh, one first summit to ending the seven summit period? Um so before each of these expeditions these are extreme <laughs> expeditions you have to prepare really really hard especially Mount Everest in a way we prepared for 2 years mm -hmm. that became the focus of our very existence you you eat sleep you your entire life revolves around your your goal, goal. we did four training expeditions before mount everest uh, for instance um, we we did two training expeditions to ladakh one to nepal and a winter climbing expedition to the french alps as well but every day uh, our training schedule was different for both the and me but i would wake up at 4 in the morning exercise till 7 7:30 in the morning a good breakfast i'd be at work by 9 or so uh, a good day's work but then i would leave early and do some more training uh, that would be swimming running going to the gym playing tennis cycling anything but Keeping getting into fit. really really good shape yes um to and and let me tell you all the training you do all the preparation you do always helps and stands you in good stead in life no whether you are climbing mount everest the seven summits or anything you're doing in life the harder you train um and the more you prepare the greater your chances of success in anything you do in life just for knowledge sake the expedition when you did all these seven uh, so it was only you and your daughter or you had a team if you are We, in france then you uh, when in france it was pretty much the two of us um, 
but on Mount Everest, we were a sub team within a within a larger team. Any uh, message on these uh, summits when you do that? What should anybody who is the future climber, they should be taking care of these basics, or the things which they should take care of. So, so when I started out, you see, uh, Mukeshji, adventure sports were considered synonymous with daredevilry. Right. You know, death-defying stuff. Yeah. Over the years, people have realized that if you do adventure sports properly, adventure sports can be very safe. Safer, for instance, uh, than driving around here <laughs> in the <laughs> national capital region yeah. where we live. So, and I think uh, my advice to any young people who want to get into adventure sports would be that, you see, uh, fitness has to be uh the the backbone of adventure sports you know you have to be physically fit yeah. and what is equally important is to train uh, at a very very high level right you know you got to be passionate about it and uh, train to the highest level possible and use the best equipment possible that you can get anywhere in the world it has to be certified to international standards the days of jugad for equipment are over now yeah, yeah. and i think what's also very important is to is to get good gurus and mentors who can who can be a part of that journey uh, your apprenticeship into adventure sports with you i think that's very important and then also to follow all safety guidelines mm -hmm. uh, that is absolutely critical uh, because as they say, uh, no mountain is worth dying for, live to climb another day. Right. So A, you've got to be, be physically fit for adventure sports. B, you've, you've got to learn. And this adventure has a long apprenticeship. Use the best equipment, go with trained people, look for people, gurus who can uh, train you to the best level possible. Always go out with uh, people who are very highly experienced. Never go out alone and follow all adventure safety guidelines. Yeah, they, the guidelines are very important yeah. because w whether you're doing water rafting or paragliding or anything, if your equipment is not good and then you're not following the guidelines, anything wrong can yeah. happen. I, and I would also say uh, one bit of advice to youngsters is that uh, if you want to get into adventure, uh, do not smoke yeah. and adventure and alcohol do not <laughs> mix. Do, uh, <laughs> that's very true. So what are the scopes abroad from the traveler point of view if they want to go abroad and what is their recommendation and so is for India. Well, so as far as adventure tourism is concerned, the world over adventure tourism is becoming a huge industry. In 2017, um, Adventure tourism was a $683 billion industry mm -hmm. and according to pre-COVID uh, projections, it was to be a trillion dollar industry by 2024. And of course, after COVID, you know, and the resulting cabin fever, people are really getting out, out of doors all over the world. And, uh, but more specifically, I do feel what we have in India, Mukeshji, we are blessed. Uh, India as an adventure destination is very special indeed. Uh, we have 73% of the Himalayan range in our country, 7,500 kilometer coastline. We have every conceivable geographical terrain. We are a biodiversity hotspot. We have everything in our country. We are blessed. Um, I think we've been working now very, very closely with the government of India and our state governments to unleash that potential in a sensible, in a sensitive and responsible manner. Our vision is to have India ranked mm. as amongst the 10 best adventure tourism destinations in the world. And uh, there, there are, we are getting a lot of support. We are working together as a team with our government um, our Ministry of Tourism has set up the National Board for Adventure Tourism last year. We've already had five very productive meetings. Um, so there, there is a lot of work being done. We have the model law 
on adventure tourism, which is on the anvil. We have adventure rescue centers. There's a lot of work in progress as well, whether it's insurance, whether it is satellite phones, uh, tourism to some of the very remote parts of our country, opening new areas, vibrant villages, border tourism, and something very close to my heart, uh, which I'm very pleased to inform you that um, our government, uh, Ministry of Tourism, has announced two mega trails. Okay. So the Western Himalayan mega trail, mm -hmm. um, this will be in from Jammu, mm -hmm. um, all the way across Kashmir, through Ladakh, uh, Himachal Pradesh, through Spiti, Himachal Pradesh, and uh, to Garhwal and Komau regions of okay. Uttarakhand. Mm -hmm. And the second mega trail, which has been announced, is the Ganga Nature and Heritage Trail, mm -hmm. which will start at Gomukh. Mm -hmm. uh, the source of the Ganga River mm -hmm. at about 14,000 feet mm -hmm. and go all the way down to the Bay of Bengal, okay. 2700 kilometers or so. So we are very excited about this and uh, um, we are hoping to make this see the light of the day very soon. How many days uh, would it take to do one trail? Uh, I think anything from three months upwards. Okay. Uh, but you can either do the through hike, yeah. which is the entire trail, or you can do sections of the trail. So we will signpost the trail uh, the, we, and we will use existing trails wherever possible. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to empower the communities along mm -hmm. the way. And then they get jobs and also. They get uh, jobs as adventure guides, guides. Uh, homestays, they set up campsites along the way yeah. and uh, it it just helps to bring in economic activity, employment into some of the remote parts of our country. So the trails are definitely the pilot projects of the government of India. Absolutely. Of tourism. Yes. It would be operated by the tour operators which is through the nodal body of adventure tour operators. Yes. This so is this, is work in, this is work in progress, progress so and uh, it's the entire system is being set up, set up as so we it speak. It will take more time, yes. obviously. Yeah. I think one of the important factors as far as adventure tourism is concerned is our safety guidelines. And um, it's critical that as adventure tour operators, um, uh, we do have the safety guidelines of uh, ATOAI, the Adventure Tour Operators Association of India. I think it's absolutely critical to follow those in letter and spirit that should be our guiding light our principle um, we have uh, 29 verticals of, of the guidelines these have also been endorsed by our ministry of tourism government of india and i think the second important aspect is that you see as adventure tour operators we have to be custodians yes of, definitely of our wilderness of our wild areas of the great Indian of the complete country and the outdoors, world outdoors yeah. you know and we have to follow the seven principles of leave no trace in letter and spirit, spirit. leaving our uh, areas our wilderness areas cleaner than we find them each time we venture out that is the kind of ethos uh, we we must adhere to when we when we go out so um, safety guidelines and uh, sustainability as well. What's also very important is to be sensitive as far as uh, whenever we visit uh, these areas, the, these areas are very, very remote. So we have to be sensitive to the local communities wherever we visit, trying to get in maximum economic benefit to, to some of these communities where we visit. Yeah. yeah. Ajit, as you said that there are guidelines which are there and which has to be adhered by the seller and even the consumer which is the client and are these listed on your uh, adventure tour operators website yes can our safety guidelines and of can you let us know the name of the website on which it is listed so that everybody can view yes it from these uh, guidelines are on the atoai website they're also on the ministry of tourism uh, website where you can find these guidelines uh, the safety guidelines of adventure tour operators association of india is atoai.org okay one more thing is that uh, the consumer 
be it a corporate or an individual. Uh, do you have any system that if they want to put in an inquiry, uh, the inquiry can come to the association and then it is distributed or do you have any mechanism to it? Yes, there is a mechanism. I think we need to review the mechanism and uh, uh, but our operators are listed on our website and uh, uh, you know they, they, they can get benefit of the ATOAI website. Yeah, the whole idea behind is that obviously then there is a value. It has been the agent has been approved by the uh, adventure tourism. So the credibility is there. So the consumer is more secured. Yes. Uh, that's why I asked this question. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody wants to take somebody as their benchmark and then follow their footsteps. Did your daughter follow your footsteps or she had somebody else in mind who was her benchmark in life but came into the adventure? Well, I'll answer that slightly differently, Mukeshji. So, my father introduced me to the outdoors. I introduced my, my daughters, Dia and Meghna, when they were also both of them very little, but in a gentle way. I didn't push them too hard, too fast. What's very important as parents when you take your children out is to instill a love for nature, mother nature and the great outdoors. Um, and uh, I think she did follow in my footsteps uh, to begin with. Um, so in the beginning, I was the team leader. But as our relationship evolved, now Dia is a, you know, a, a great outdoor person. So now we are, uh, we are partners and I know in time to come, she will be the leader. And likewise, when we go scuba diving, it's my younger daughter, Meghna, right. who is pretty much the, the team leader mm -hmm. um, when, when we go out diving. Yeah. Any yardsticks they have already made for themselves that this is when they reach that level, maybe in some years, that this is the yardstick we would like to do for the respective uh, adventure tourism which they have ventured into? I think they are really enjoying themselves. Uh, that's that's most important. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they will uh, they will join join us at Snow Leopard Adventures soon. Uh, but that's their choice yeah. and uh, not something I, I ever no point want forcing. to push. No, no, yeah, no point absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that I totally yeah. agree. You have been working with the government very closely, you and your team completely. What is it that the adventure tour operators has been able to achieve for the adventure tourism? And what is your wish list that which can, which should get achieved or the government should be doing this part so that the adventure tourism can move forward more quickly? So as I mentioned earlier, we forged a fantastic relationship with uh, our Ministry of Tourism Government of India and a whole lot of state governments you see, we are passionate about adventure tourism, so we we working together, and uh, I think the government sees that passion as well. We are here to give to back to this profession, uh, profession that we love. Um, so I think we've been able to achieve a lot together. The National Board for Adventure Tourism, for instance, has been a great step forward. Um, there is a, a lot of work in progress. We are working on the mega trails, the model law, the adventure rescue centers. We are working on insurance, satellite phones, opening new areas like um, Nanda Devi Sanctuary, for instance. Um, so there is a lot of work still to be done and miles to go before we sleep. Um, one of the suggestions, for instance, is to have a trans Himalayan mega trail, right. which starts in India uh, and goes into Nepal in Kumau in Uttarakhand, goes through Nepal and comes back into India, goes through the Darjeeling area, Sikkim area, goes into Bhutan okay. and comes out into the beautiful Arunachal uh, Pradesh mm -hmm. and ends in Eastern Arunachal Pradesh. So a full fledged uh, uh, Trans Himalayan mega trail. A lot of youngsters would like to definitely join in our tourism industry and then specialize into adventure tourism. 
what is the message you have for them that this is what they have to ensure that when they enter in they should be working at obviously my also feeling is that straight away they should not be looking for money it doesn't work out you have to really work very hard to achieve that so what are the messages that you would like to give to them and what is it that they and why should they be coming into this industry i think it's a fantastic industry adventure tourism is great uh however my advice would be do it only if you enjoy yeah. adventure if you're passionate about adventure um um it's 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 a great profession and uh, it's it's very rewarding but do it if you're passionate about the great outdoors and about adventure it's off the cuff the question any ex- experience which you have had which because it is adventure tourism and death can stare you anything which happened along when you were on any expedition so well uh, on mount everest for instance uh, it's really sad uh, but you do see yeah. a few frozen bodies of climbers which is not a good sight because they are fellow climbers like you who sadly uh, got caught in bad weather or something went wrong um but i think the most important aspect here is uh, that uh, for instance mount everest uh, the tibetans call it chomolongma which uh, translates to mother goddess of the universe and i think it's very important to respect mountains and mother nature uh, we should never uh, talk about conquering nature or mount everest mother nature is supreme yes and i think supreme. we must always Respected. approach mother nature with humility and respect yeah we human beings are too small too, too small. insignificant to to ever uh, consider anything else yeah yeah we can't conquer it yes ajit ji one of the questions which i have in mind is mount kailash climbable So Mount Kailash in Western Tibet is considered uh, a holy mountain by four religions the Hindu religion they consider it uh, as the abode of Lord Shiva um, there is uh, the Jains and um, also Buddhists uh, who consider uh, Mount Kailash sacred we also have the Bonpos who who consider Mount Kailash sacred and the Parikrama Uh, going to mansarovar and kailash uh, it's a uh, it's it's the journey of a lifetime i was very lucky to do this about 24 years back um it's a very special part of the planet and uh, i do feel that mount kailash is a very special mountain it has four faces and it's like somebody has chiseled them to perfection uh you it's it's stunning it's it's beautiful as far as climbing mount kailash is concerned i think this is it it i would feel that as a mountain it can definitely be be climbed but uh, they don't allow anyone to climb the mountain uh, as a mark of respect to these four great religions okay. uh, your company name is snow leopard have you been able to ever Uh, see the snow leopard yes mukesh ji i've been very uh, fortunate and capture it also i i have been able to get photographs which i will share with you yeah um but as you know the snow leopard is uh, is a beautiful um, endangered animal found high up uh, in the himalayas they call it the grey ghost of the himalaya because it's so elusive so difficult to see it's found in 14 countries of the world mm-hmm. uh starting with uh, with russia uh nepal bhutan mongolia um india of course is india perhaps is the best place in the world for wildlife tourism mm-hmm. and the two parts of india where you get which is great for snow leopard sightings you have ladakh and spiti yeah but um, you you also get the snow leopard in pakistan mm-hmm. and four central asian republics tajikistan uzbekistan kyrgyzstan and kazakhstan okay 
what are the main destinations you would like to be promoted as adventure tourism in india any particular in particular i think india has a lot and we 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 need to uh, a lot of uh, our present destinations um, well not just for adventure tourism but tourism itself i feel that as a country our existing destinations we need to look at them we in from a sustainability perspective we need to look at them from a carrying capacity perspective and we definitely need to have new destinations our country has a lot Not, yeah. uh, a lot to offer uh, we are a subcontinent yeah. and uh, you know whether you're talking about the andaman islands to kerala to karnataka to the northeast one beautiful part of the country which is still relatively i would say untouched is the northeast the people are great and uh, i think they have a huge amount of potential in the northeast and we should uh, we should be sensitive in how we go about promoting it ajit ji it's been nice talking to you but one promise i'm taking from you and i'm sure you will not say no to it and that is i'm going to come back again with an for an interview with you but with your both daughters and you'll have to explain us more of the different things what you have done the summits and on the other aspects so you give me a promise on camera so that done it okay it will be a pleasure yeah. you're a friend for many years and it will be a pleasure and an honor to do that thank you thank you much. thank you so thank much you. thank you